leadership, right? You want to put them on that leadership framework. But my mother did not play around. My mother was not a new age thinker like, let's talk about this. Right? Now, I believe in gender equity. All right? But, and, and my father was this machista guy. He used to always love to say, es lo que yo diga. And I'm like, why is he acting like that? We know who the real power is. <laughs> right? So whenever he would try to exercise his leadership, que yo diga, we would look to my mother. <laughs> my mother would say, let your father have his moment. <laughs> We're a house of respect. Tomorrow morning, we shall have an answer. I don't know what happened that night, but my father would wake up a totally transformed man. And he would say something like this, Pues la pensé otra vez. And a leader can change his mind. And we would look again to my mother. Gracias, jefa. Thank you. So Mrs. Hansen, 31 years, we still know who's in charge. <laughs> right? It takes a team. It takes a team. And that's why we're here. We're here not to talk about where we fall on the spectrum. But we're here to recognize that every child every day gets to see all of us every day. And all of us have the beauty and the blessing to be in the path of every child every day, no matter what your duty says. There was a guy who was trying to be flippant, sarcastic. Yeah. And he said one day, he said, well, you know, I'm a custodian. And then he tried to, you know, say that he was a, an administrator, that he had a PhD. I said, yeah, that means in my barrio, Pachuco, highly developed. Okay. <laughs> that, that's not going to work. I said, sir, with all due respect, you say custodian. Well, guess what? We're all custodians of our children every day, every way. Because you take pride. Can you imagine if Dr. Hansen was to call the office of any school and you answered, Riverside, what do you want? Come on. And the answer is no. Come on. You would hurt his heart. Can you imagine if on that bus our little babies half asleep, half awake, maybe their hair combed, maybe not. Maybe someone didn't even say goodbye. And you get to stand there in those wheels and you look at that cargo. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you, you're not just transportation. You are the freedom drivers. Because when you bring the children, they will forever be free when you get them into the school. You are the ones. When, when we come onto any of your campuses and the custodians look and do their work with orgullo, with ganas, then no child every day will not say, that's my home because I can see my face on the floor and it says, I matter and this is where you will succeed. Starting with me saying, buenos dias. Good morning, mijo. How are you today? How are you doing? And I know when you sit in that cafeteria and you know you're on the 60,000th pizza. <laughs> I know. And the child is on a Monday and they come and their belly is hungry. And they're looking at you and they're saying, Miss, por favor, just one more. And I know. I know you're thinking, well, what's the CFO going to say? There's that pizza, I'll figure it out later. 
Ah, uh, you eat. You eat. You know what? You're going to eat. Yes, I'll do 30 pages to uh, justify my de the decision. But for now, you eat, mijo. Right? That's why no one can succeed in a district by themselves. Just like every child is giving you the opportunity for you to get to know them as a person. Yes, they may come from a family like mine, a family of 10. I know. <laughs> but can you imagine, just to give you an idea of how difficult I was. I come from a family of seven brothers. Yes, I come from a barrio. My barrio had a special name. El Rincón del Diablo. The Devil's Den. You know what I mean? The other side of the tracks. Three streets and there's the Rio Grande. Right? And then people would say, well, you know how you write your summer essay? I, used to, I thought they were saying, oye, essay. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't understand. <laughs> how did you spend your summer vacation? He said, oh, wow, well, what, what do they think, that I went anywhere? <laughs> well, dear essay, <laughs> I went to work. <laughs> what was your adventure? Right? I, I grew up helping my parents. I grew up. There's, there's nothing wrong with admitting that you grew up learning from these amazing people. My parents had a third grade education, but I lift their names today because they had a PhD in life. In life. They did not. They, I tell you, my mother did not accept mediocrity no 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 there wasn't this gray area come on let's be real how many, how many of you are survivors of your mother's mirada the love. see that's the best lesson in diversity I don't know where they go to school but they all do this You know you're messing up. And your mother's trying to draw attention. And you know, I'm a street kid. My homies would say, hey, Chelo, uh-huh. That's your mother, man. That's your heifer. No, uh-huh. That's a nice lady. <laughs> but let's be real. When my mother was done, she didn't even have to say it. She would just go, mira, hija tu madre. Okay. For the record, because it's on video, I'm not advocating that kind of parenting anymore. But I think my mother was like a pioneer of the guided missile. You thought yeah, la vieja, man, I outran her. Satalas, man, that thing would find you. And you're like, how did it do the 90 degree turn? Where did that thing come from? Don't, don't you remember? Come on, let's be real. And they would sit there and say, mija, this is going to hurt me. You all need to go to a healing workshop, <laughs> right? And then they would sit there and go, I'm doing this because I love you. How did my mother get to Riverside? <laughs> but every child, every day comes to you with a story. And they may not be the story that you thought. You see, my story was a secret for most of my life. I didn't understand growing up in my barrio, the number one heroin corridor in the world. Why did my neighbor have to die for a little bag of heroin? 
and only cost five dollars. Why did my mother get taken away in the middle of the night? And I would look at her and wonder, will you come back? And yet everyone in my village, in my barrio would say, es que tu mami está malita. She's just a little sick. When you're five and six and seven, you don't know what that means. You just know that your mommy is missing. It's called mental illness. When you talk about internal oppression, about realizing that, that in your community there is so much pain that you try to protect what little dignity you have left. So that the district, the school, is where freedom begins. And yet, from that grass being cut, it speaks a language of love for every child every day. When people say, well, I'm just a paraeducator. You're not a paraeducator. You are an educator, period. You have a responsibility. Never, ever do we downplay our role because somehow somebody's got a hierarchy. Folks, you are the backbone of a district. And all of us have a gift and a talent just like every child. When I was going to school, my father told me something. We were in Mexico, and I was with my papi, as you can see, I was idolized him. Seven brothers. My father had to really keep me on a tight leash. Because this is what he said one day, out of the seven boys, Chelo, all of them together don't add up to you. Now you know why the army was like kindergarten to me. <laughs> so my dad had to just tenerme aquí all the time. He had to watch me because I didn't realize that I was gifted, that I wanted to build things. I wanted to break up things. I, wa I had a curious, critical mind. But a kid like me, no. No, because what is she, e ELL? Oh, okay, well, we're going to put her over here. What was that? LEP? Okay. Well, then maybe she'll be over here. What's that? Economically disadvantaged? Oh. Oh, wow. What's that? ADD? And HD? Oh, my. Where do we put them? It got to where I didn't understand the dialogue between my teachers because I said, excuse me, miss, which of the 19 labels are you talking to? You see, every child every day doesn't need to have a label. We have but one way to say it's there are children, period. That's it. There are kids. They belong to us. There are kids. Right? But here I am in Mexico and my father tells stories about going to El Norte. To this day, I don't know how they made it to Sterling, Illinois, 1,800 miles without GPS. Right? And there my dad would say things like, no, pues que les digo. And he would fantasize. I mean, I thought it was a fantasy. And he would stand and he would never say the word America sitting down. He'd get to that word, America. And I'm like, orale, wow. <laughs> and he would tell another story of being a migrant, about going up and, but never painted a negative image always about being hopeful. And so the children will come to you. And we need to teach them by modeling ourselves. We need to help them, even when they're angry and confused and hurt. We need to go deeper into that, underneath that surface and see the, where does this come from? And so I loved America, and I, I, we're in a bus. Have you ever been in those buses in Mexico? That 500, I mean, 500 get in, but the capacity is 50? 
Right? And chickens right free. Está todo el plumero ahí. And you're and it's hot. There's no air conditioner. Eh? And you're riding in the camión. And, right? And all of a sudden I couldn't take it. I said, Papi! He stopped the bus. We all spilled out. Chickens flew out. And he said, What is it, mi amor? What is it? I said, Papi, I can't take it anymore. Ya no me aguanto. He goes, What? I wanna go to America. He said, Mija. Ven, and we sat on a curb. He said, Consuelo, I have news for you. Uh, you were born there. Uh? He says, Mija, America. He says, Spirit, te toca el alma. He said, What do you mean? I don't feel anything. He said, Mija, what do you see right now? Hey, well, I see a, a lady, papi, and she's begging, I think. He says, sí, hija. Is that a baby she's hiding? You know, mija, she's nursing. She has her hand out. She's hoping. What do we see every day in our kids? Do we see they're hungry? Do we see their hand wanting to tell us, good morning, sir? Good morning, ma'am. Are we too busy? Because the job is the priority, but the relationship is second. I said, Papi, I see a little kid. He keeps following me. Ah, como frega. He said, Why do you not like him? Because he keeps wanting me to buy gums. I don't like gum. He said, Mija, he's hoping someone will. So that he brings it home to his family. Maybe they'll eat that day. More than just a tortilla and frijol. I said, well, papi, I see these men on, they're collecting cardboard. He said, oh, Consuelo, you're missing the most important lesson of all. He said, get up. I said, yes, sir. He goes, look under the bridge. And look over the bridge as well. What do you see? I see houses. They're made of that cardboard, hija. He said, but I'm going to tell you something, mija. That's their only reality. But it's not yours. He said, are you ready? And he grabbed my hand. And I didn't realize that the division between the haves and the have-nots, the hopeless and the opportunity, the dream and the gatekeeper was an inch and a half wide. He said, brinca, hija. Jump over. Now you can tell me. America. He said, ¿sabes qué, mija? You're the American dream. I am? He said, yes. It might take them a little while. Porque eres tremenda. So I went to school, ladies and gentlemen, as a non-English speaker. And a kid like me entering a room, just like Dr. Henson said, you know, the world becomes very small and very dark. And you're scared and you're traumatized. But I immediately, because I'm a kid from El Rincón, I looked around. I go, Aida. Aida will be my lens. She was a beautiful little girl. She spoke English. I didn't know it was Spanglish. And Aida dressed beautifully. I thought, who bought her that dress? My dress came from La Segunda. Right? My shoes were from La Justicia, across the border. But I thought that maybe she would see that every child every day that we didn't understand difference, that we were just one. We were kids. So I went to Aida and I said, Oye, Aida, ¿tú hablas el pretty English? And she was so cute, she goes, yes, I do. <laughs> I said, ¿tú me ayudas? You help me? 
She said, well, what do you, what do you need? I said, Aida, es que no le entiendo ni jota la maestra. I don't understand a thing she's saying. She said, well, don't worry. You'll learn. Le dije, mira, eh, este, let's make a deal, ¿eh? Hacemos un trato. She said, okay. Well, what are you going to give me? I said, look, I pointed to this box. I didn't know it was called a lunchbox. She said, I said, ¿qué es eso? Because it's a lunchbox. I said, open, abre. She opened it and a beautiful white bread and I don't know what else was in it. I said, oh man, that looks really bad. She said, no puede ser. I said, Aida, I have something better for you. She said, you do? I said, orale. I opened my little brown bag. I took my papas con huevo taco and I said, here you go. You're going to be just fine. She said, and she ate the whole thing. Talk about quality control. I think she's working at Boeing now. I don't know. She said, I'll help you with English. But tomorrow, mañana, I go, ¿qué pasó? Mañana? Yes, two tacos. <laughs> Ida retired as a 35-year bilingual ed teacher. She says, for real, Cello, have you made me famous? I go, I also told them you're still on Weight Watchers. <laughs> She's like, you're so mean. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I've been told I got about five minutes. I just heard from the board. <laughs> Thank you. Now I know who's in charge. <laughs> nah, we're just kidding. You know you got to go home to your families. But let me just, on a serious note. I didn't realize growing up that I had to give up one for the other. That I could that I couldn't learn English, but I must forget my Spanish. That they would put my little hands out and would hit me with rulers. That they told me that my name could not be Consuelo, that it had to be Connie. I defied that. I get to see the principal. I'm supposed to be expelled at the age of six. My principal is trying to make sense of all this. This idea of equity and inclusion and sensitivity and self-respect. And I'll never forget her. I love you, Mrs. Trevino. But she got down to my eye level and she spoke just like this. What is... I'm learning the wrong English. I didn't know it was phonics. See, it, we don't know. We don't understand curriculum and instruction. We just know that we're different. And I said, well, maybe I need to answer or model. Le dije, Miss, a ver, one moment. Because she said, what's wrong with Kami? Le dije, un moment. I don't know her. <laughs> she said, oh my goodness. I said, ladies and gentlemen, no one's dignity and self-respect and heritage. As I said this morning in visiting Appalachia or visiting the Spanish Harlem and everything in between, whether it's the migrant fields in Washington State where our gente makes those 5,000 mile trips. All of us are in this for one reason. Every child, every day, can see each other beyond their skin color, can see each other beyond where they live, can see each other as having each other's back. Because I can tell you, When you put that patch and it says U.S. and you serve with me, I'd have your back.
And I don't know if I carry you, but I would die bringing you home. That's what it's about. And so, remember, remember not to let the past define our future. Remember to help this leader and his team. Remember that if you want to make a criticism, a great leader brings a solution. Remember that our union started because something did not exist that was there, and it's called dignity and equity. It is there to work together. And we're not going to always agree, but let not the children think that we're not going to collaborate because there's something greater than our current situation. It's the future of all children every day. That's what matters. And so I tell you, in this last slide, in 1948, my parents lived in a boxcar, like that one, for five years. And no one would rent to them because, but in that same boxcar settlement lived the Sokorski, the Polish family. And they shared each other's dreams and prayers in church on Sunday. And they believed that one day that Polish child with that Mexican child would come to a place called education. And their minds would be unshackled. And they would understand freedom. And freedom does not have criteria. It is about standing together and saying, si se puede, yes we can. So Riverside, you are the backbone. Never undermine or say, I'm just. Rather say, it is because our children will succeed. So take, continue to take honor and pride in what you do. My mother didn't clean toilets. She made them sparkle. And she said, do a job so well done, mija that even when you're not there, your work will speak for you. It's called standards. It's called excellence. It's called si se puede. So thank you, my, my brother, my friend. Thank you for allowing this old soldier to come. Home.